welcome to worship. This uh, 6th of February at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho, I'm Pastor David Opus. I'm substituting for Pastor Paul in the, uh, for the liturgy this morning. Let's confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who created us, redeemed us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Savior and Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to Worship at Emmanuel this first Sunday of February. My name is Kelly Proboski. I serve as the Executive Director with Luther Heights Bible Camp and it is my joy and honor to be in worship with you today as a guest preacher. Well, hello. So I brought with me this box and as you can see it's green and it has some trees and maybe it just is a cube or a box but see my friend Casey once taught me or she was sharing with me that this box is actually extra special kind of like a relationship with God and as you can see I'm opening it up and I see different colors I see purple now and orange and they have all these different angles and I can peek through it and it's very similar to God's love. God's love is boundless. It comes in all sorts of forms. And as we grow and change throughout our life, so does God's love. God grows with us. You'll hear in the gospel reading, Jesus jumps in the boat with us. God is seeking relationship. God helps us and wants us to know God's love is beyond just what we thought was a cue. I'm going to read our theme verse for the summer which comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know the love of Christ that suppresses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say this to this people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land, even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, 
whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. there at the shore. The fishermen had gone out to them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little away from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled the boats so that they began, so much they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For me, for he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish. And they had, they had taken in. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now on you will be catching people. 
When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. One thing someone in outdoor ministry like myself may notice immediately in our readings today are the connections of Jesus' presence in nature, or people connecting to the triune God amongst creation. In Isaiah verse, or chapter 6, verse 3, we hear, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The splendor of a sunset over the mountains are the colors of the morning sky as the sun rises over rises. The babbling of a creek or the beauty of a delicate butterfly floating across our view. God's creation is truly full of glory. The gospel story from Luke has us at the water's edge fishing. God's presence is often in central view when one is surrounded by creation. Surprising to some and not to others is that one of the most often things I hear as I travel and visit people across the state to share the ministry of Luther Heights is how much people enjoy disconnecting to connect. They treasure that their cell phones do not work on our sacred playground in the beautiful Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho. Often at camp, we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit as the breeze ripples through the pine trees all over camp. Or marvel at a deer coming up near a Sawtooth Lodge dining hall at the same time we were all eating dinner. Or lie in wonder and curiosity as we gaze upon the stars in the night sky. Makes you want to head to camp, doesn't it? Don't worry, I'll share many exciting opportunities later. One of our donors, volunteers, campers, and staff said it this way. It is as if when I come to camp, a place set apart, I can exhale. And there is where the voice of God, the love and grace of God, can often stir within each of us. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 says, Here I am, send me. Which leads us perfectly into the verses from Luke today, a calling of disciples. Our verses have us on the shores of a lake with a crowd pressing in on Jesus, a desire to hear the word of God. Jesus preaches and teaches to the crowd, but also engages with a fisherman. Jesus connects with Simon, acknowledges the hard day of fishing with little catch, but encourages Simon to get back in the boat and try again. Fishing can be a very enjoyable way to spend time in God's creation, but it isn't without its struggles or frustrations before and during the catch. And for these people, it wasn't just a leisurely activity. This was their job, how they provided for their community and family. One of the parts of the gospel today that remains in the forefront of my mind is that Jesus is present in all of this. Jesus teaches the crowd from the boat, but also tells Simon, Go back in your boat and try again. And Jesus gets in the boat. He stays with the people he is leading and uses his hands to help cast out the net deeper. Simon doubted himself some likely and also was acknowledging the reality of limits. It was a, after a long day. The catch wasn't good and all were tired. But Simon listened and went out again in the boat. Notice that Jesus gets in the boat. He doesn't ask permission. He just gets in the boat and goes with Simon to cast out the nets. Jesus is like that, you see. Jesus doesn't always ask to get involved with our lives to allow us to encounter grace in profound ways. Jesus just goes ahead and does it. Simon took a risk, and the risk was great. He handed his work, his livelihood to Jesus, and they went out to fish together. God genuinely loves each of us, disciples, enough to turn and care for us as individuals. God wants to be with us in our boat, not just when we are riding the calm waves or experiencing joy, but also when, especially when, we are facing the big, scary waves, when we are feeling lonely or confused or overwhelmed. Jesus acknowledges a time of emptiness or discouragement and encourages his disciples to see God as a source of hope and abundance. Jesus asks them to go to the deep waters implying there may be unexplored areas of potential beyond perceived limits of resources, knowledge, or energy. Sounds a bit like we have been experiencing for the past two years navigating a way forward in a global health pandemic. COVID has been a big storm in all of our lives in many ways, and yet I can name deep waters and abundance, 
hopeful, positive things that have come because of God jumping in the boat with us and helping us see beyond our limits. Church is now streaming services for those at home and feeling called to keep that aspect of ministry thriving. Would if that have happened without the call to go into deep waters? Congregations doing Zoom check-ins or Bible studies. The Treasure Valley Area ELCA churches coming together to create a website with regular devotions and resources. I rejoice in God's presence among these choices to let Jesus guide us a bit beyond our comfort zones. And leaders willing to try something new and find new life. For Luther Heights, in a summer of 2020, a very small staff and many volunteers focusing on a lot of property projects. I called it the summer that Luther Heights received a great big hug. But also, in that time, in the months to come, we tried a camp in the box ministry to send campers who couldn't come to camp that season, video messages via social media, and an online program for high school students. Things that we were pushed and encouraged to do with faith and hope to try, and tools which helped us both reach new audiences and helped us reach our beloved loyal audience in new ways. Then to summer 2021, when we were beginning to emerge and hosting guests again at camp. And the message I shared with the board in August was that the simple moments mattered. The running and laughter of kids on our trails, the hugs of old friends who hadn't seen each other in over a year at retreat weekends, the young adult summer staff saying serving on staff was exactly the loving community they needed, they needed to begin to recover from the toll of the pandemic. Jesus challenged us to go into the deep waters, unfamiliar territory, walked alongside us, carried us at moments, and helped us discover so much in the journey. So we continue in these verses of Luke, and as a fisherman let down their nets, they caught an enormous amount of fish. So much the nets began to break, and they needed to ask for help. Jesus provided a gift of plenty, abundance, feeding many for days, but the story doesn't end here. Actually, the climax of the story is coming. Jesus tells the disciples to drop everything. They are going to begin to fish for people. They are, there is likely confusion at this request, I am sure, and questions of, but how or who? Questions we are still called to wonder in today's context. So the point is, we are called to be disciples. We all have gifts, gifts God wants us to use to share the love, grace, joy, and presence of God with all. You are these vessels, today's disciples. There will be steps forward and backwards, maybe even a zigzag before moving forward, but we are called to take these steps with God right by our side, leading us, encouraging us, maybe pushing us to things we couldn't imagine. At camp, one of my favorite activities to do with the middle school and high school campers is something that I call the life maze. It is basically a grid or a checkerboard, and the team of youth have to figure out their way across it individually and as a team. Of course, one big secret of the activity is that we have to take a step backwards at least once, shh, don't tell them, before finding the windy way forward and out. Sounds a lot like life, huh? Thankfully, a God who calls fishermen to be disciples can also use a tarp and duct tape to connect to people, to teach lessons of humility and strength, of courage and of asking for help as we navigate the waters of life that we face. The gospel today reminds us that Jesus will give meaning to the calls that come in a fishing boat to the early disciples and to the weird disciples of 2022 as we continue to navigate ways forward where we show concern and care for our neighbors, share the love of God with others, and have the courage to be stretched in new ways. Remember, God jumps in your life's boat walks alongside you, and helps you grow in ways that you would have never thought possible without God's presence in your life, calling you to cast out your net a little deeper. Amen.
of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse toward violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Renew their spirits and protect them. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, giving thanks to Christ, who comes to us in this holy meal. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed by this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you have been able to, to gather some bread and wine in your home or have but bread or wine alone, Please bring it together now and share it with, with those around you or with me as we remember Christ's promise. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthened with the richness of your grace, in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So 2022 is a super exciting year for Luther Heights. Uh, this is the year that we're celebrating 70 years of ministry. So I invite you to participate. Um, I have in the gathering area as well, if you, we can send it via email, but we have these little half sheets where we invite uh, people who have come to Luther Heights or experience the joy, the love and grace of God to write down your stories so we can collect them. Uh, we'll eventually gather them into stories and videos and, and continue to share throughout the year. Um, also on our program schedule, you'll notice in orange, 
We're doing three uh, large uh, events to celebrate, to honor this anniversary celebration. Uh, and the first one for people in the west side of the state in the Treasure Valley is actually here at Emanuel. Uh, we're gonna do worship, a camp style worship, as well as we're calling it the blue jean ball. So wear your blue jeans and your chacos or your tennies, a camp t-shirt or a flannel, um, and we'll have some fellowship time and pie and things after. So stay tuned for that. That is May 1st here at Emanuel. Um, also, August 6th, we're hosting a weekend at camp. Um, that is a retreat weekend on us as Thanksgiving to all of the ministry and the ways that God has blessed uh, this organization. And uh, that, that will be either a weekend event or a day event. You can pick Saturday. Saturday will be the most um, of the activities, including a story walk and hearing different parts of how buildings um, came to be or fun stories that people are willing to share as well as a camp style worship. This sheet is also um, out in the gathering area and again on our website. Uh, so you will see the blue has all sorts of our um, youth camps, our family camps, and our grandparent kid camp and the dates of that. Uh, the yellow focuses on our retreats and we have a lot of different retreats coming up this um, year. So over the July 4th weekend, uh, you could either choose to participate in a family camp or a getaway weekend, which simply just means uh, you can come and stay in one of our cabins, allow us to serve you food and uh, host with hospitality and engage in as little or as much as program if, of you, that you want. Um, our women's retreat is uh, July 15th through 17th. Um, and this year, um, Mary Morrow, who works with uh, the bishop, will be our presenter. We're doing a new retreat called the Hike and Pray Retreat. So we're gonna take you hiking uh, with some of our staff on some of the best trails and um, also pray along the way. Um, in August, we have one called Name Your Adventure. This is where we'll do fly fishing. Uh, you can sign up for whitewater rafting or horseback riding if you want. And we're also connecting with BSU students. Um, camp is in a dark sky sanctuary. And so we're gonna connect with some of the students and uh, help us learn and discover more about this astrology and what the amount of stars we can see at camp. Uh, we're trying a men's retreat this year as well. Um, another new retreat called Mindfulness in the Mountains. So tapping into our mental health and mindfulness and how um, can you live your best life by being very mindful of what is going on around you and some tools to process everything we've been through for the last couple years. Um, and then we also have another new retreat. It's called the Grief and Reflection Retreat, which is in September. And that uh, will be with Pastor Barb Condon um, and walking with people in their journey of grief, um, whether it be from transition in life, the death of a loved one, a divorce, anything that is uh, grief that you're working through. So we have numerous opportunities. Of course, the green is all of our service weekends where because you're serving and working with us, um, being the hands and feet to help us open and close camp. Those weekends are on um, us as well, and we thank you for your dedicated time and service. Yes. Feel free to reach out to us um, at Luther Heights, whether it's calling our office or emailing us, director at lutherheights.org, and we are happy to answer any of your questions. We do hope to open registration, plan to open registration March 1st, um, and our LIT leader and training program for high school um, uh, youth, those applications will be open this month, February. So reach out to us and we look forward to engaging with you.